Hello and welcome to Reading with Carrie, Stories to Fall Asleep to, a mindfulness podcast series that can be used as a sleep aid or to ease your anxiety and relieve your stress. I am your host, Carrie Favel, and I am so thankful that you've decided to spend some time with me. Today's episode is on the Chinese zodiac rat. Rats are quick-witted, resourceful, and smart, but lack courage. With rich imaginations and sharp observations, they can take advantage of various opportunities well. Our validation space today again comes from Dwarak Peck. People with a mental health issue are generally nonviolent. In fact, only 3 to 5% of violent acts can be attributed to people with a serious mental illness. I think this is a very important distinction to make, as a lot of times the stigma that surrounds those with mental illness is that they are manipulative or even violent, when really that isn't the case. Most people with mental illnesses aren't violent at all, and instead are battling an internal war with demons and other metaphorical issues. And before we begin, let's start with a brief mindfulness exercise. Close your eyes and take a posture that is relaxed, taking care to keep your back and neck in alignment. As you get situated, really notice your body, feeling the weight of your body on the chair, the bed, the floor, or wherever you may be in this moment. Notice the position of your feet and any sensations you can feel with them. Locate your legs and the blunt pressure on whatever seat you are on. Feel any sensations in your arms and make sure your shoulders are soft. Where are your hands resting? What are they feeling? Acknowledge any tension that you feel in your muscles and allow your body to express itself, being present in the moment. Just be aware of the tension or whatever may be happening in your body. Simply note the communication with a simple thought of, I hear you, that's how it is right now. Bring your focus to your breath, but don't alter it in any way. Just feel your body's natural rhythm as you inhale and exhale. Feel the oxygen enter your lungs, that slight hitch between inhale and exhale, and the sensation of the air exiting your lungs with another micro moment between breaths. Let's extend our awareness to our mind. What thoughts or feelings or perceptions are present right now? Again, we are just noting these thoughts and feelings in this moment. Don't try to push or shut down any sense of discomfort or unpleasant feelings, but don't dwell on them either. Simply validate them with a simple acknowledgement, such as, that's okay, that's how it is right now. Keeping the connection you have with your body, reach your hands above your head, stretching your arms. Tense up the muscles as you breathe in and hold them in place for just a moment. And now, as you release the breath, relax your muscles and place your arms back to where they were resting comfortably before. Let's repeat this once more. Raising your hands above your head, tense your muscles in your arms and shoulders as you breathe in and hold the position as you hold your breath for just a short count of four. Then release your breath as you release your muscles and rest your arms back to where they were. Now focus back to your breathing and notice how you can relax by taking slow, deep breaths in and releasing your breath slowly out. Breathe in, hold your breath, and breathe out slowly. Breathe in and out. Keep breathing deeply, gently, and slowly. Now, notice your whole body as being present. Be aware of every part at once, as best you can, as you continue to softly and deeply breathe in and out. If you are preparing yourself for bed, continue to breathe in and out, and just listen to my voice, but do not follow. 
If you need to ready yourself to get back to your day, then let us now widen our spatial awareness by using our other senses. What sounds do you hear in the room other than my voice? Are there any smells you can recognize? Feel the item on which you are resting with all of your body and imagine it in your mind. Try to picture it as accurately as you can without opening your eyes just yet. And now, take a deep breath in on an inhale of four. Hold your breath for a count of four. And on an audible sigh, release your breath as you open your eyes and fully come back. And now, here's the story. The Rat Princess, a Japanese fairy tale, translated by Frank Rinder in 1918. Once upon a time, there was a rat princess who lived with her father, the Rat King, and her mother, the Rat Queen, in a rice field in faraway Japan. The Rat Princess was so pretty that her father and mother were quite foolishly proud of her and thought no one good enough to play with her. When she grew up, they would not let any of the rat princes come to visit her, and they decided at last that no one should marry her till they had found the most powerful person in the whole world. No one else was good enough, and the father rat started out to find the most powerful person in the whole world. The wisest and oldest rat in the rice field said that the sun must be the most powerful person because he made the rice grow and ripen. So the rat king went to find the sun, he climbed up the highest mountain, ran up the path of a rainbow, and traveled and traveled across the sky till he came to the sun's house. What do you want, little brother? The sun said when he saw him. I come, said the Rat King, very importantly, to offer you the hand of my daughter, the princess, because you are the most powerful person in the world. No one else is good enough. Ha ha, laughed the jolly round sun and winked with his eye. You are very kind, little brother. But if that is the case, the princess is not for me. The cloud is more powerful than I am. When he passes over me, I cannot shine. Oh, indeed, said the Rat King. Then you're not my man at all. And he left the sun without more words. The sun laughed and winked to himself. And the Rat King traveled and traveled across the sky till he came to the cloud's house. What do you want, little brother? sighed the cloud when he saw him. I come to offer you the hand of my daughter, the princess, said the Rat King. Because you are the most powerful person in the world, the sun said so, and no one else is good enough. The cloud sighed again. I am not the most powerful person, he said. The wind is stronger than I. When he blows, I have to go wherever he sends me. Then you are not the person for my daughter, said the Rat King proudly, and he started at once to find the wind. He traveled and traveled across the sky till he came at last to the wind's house at the very edge of the world. When the wind saw him coming, he laughed a big gusty laugh. Ho, ho! And asked him what he wanted. And when the Rat King told him that he had come to offer him the Rat Princess's hand because he was the most powerful person in the world, the wind shouted a great gusty shout and said, No, no, I am not the strongest. The wall that man has made is stronger than I. I cannot make him move. With all my blowing, go to the wall, little brother. And the Rat King climbed down the sky path again and traveled and traveled across the earth till he came to the wall. It was quite near his own rice field. What do you want, little brother? Grumbled the wall when he saw him. I come to offer you the hand of the princess, my daughter, because you are the most powerful person in the world and no one else is good enough. Ugh, ugh, grumbled the wall. I am not the strongest. The big gray rat who lives in the cellar is stronger than I. When he gnaws and gnaws at me, I crumble and crumble, and at last I fall. Go to the rat, little brother. And so, after going all over the world to find the strongest person, the rat had to marry his daughter to a rat after all. But the princess was very glad of it, for she wanted to marry the gray rat all that time. Thank you for listening. I welcome you back anytime you may need to hear a comforting voice or a familiar bedtime story.